So after over a year of waiting, I finally got the analog pocket. This device is something that I have so many conflicting emotions about. Overall, I'm very happy with it. I do think it was worth the wait for me personally, especially Game Boy Advance being my most nostalgic system, possibly my favorite system, and also someone that actually will utilize the music capability of this. However, I have to be transparent with a lot of you. This is not a device for everybody. Now, I'm gonna leave timestamps below for you in the bottom so you guys can just kind of skip to the part where you guys wanna maybe learn about my experience with the Pocket or maybe you don't care about that, you just wanna learn about what the Pocket is in general, I will leave timestamps for all of that. So the Analog Pocket is essentially a Game Boy that was made within 2020, 2021 that actually plays physical cartridges. So it's not emulation, right? This is actually something that plays the physical cartridge inside of the Pocket itself. It works with Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. There's a few other systems that it works for that I'm not too keen on. I know the Game Gear it works on. I think that's the one I'm thinking about. And it has attachments for those, but out of the box, you play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games on this thing. For me, that's extremely important, especially if you play games like Pokemon, right? Especially the Game Boy Advance Pokemon games. Emulation for those kind of games is notorious for possibly deleting your save file. That's happened to me multiple times with multiple emulations and ROMs and, and stuff like that. So I have the physical cartridge for all my Pokemon games. So those are the games that I actually will play in here. Nothing will run better than a physical cartridge of a game. And that's why I love this thing. There are portable emulators that I, I personally even have one and they work great and they are very impressive. However, there's just something about running physical game cartridges that is just very appealing to me um, in particular. And I feel like I just that's something that I will utilize almost every single day. And if I have the choice between emulation and physical cartridge, I will always go for that. A lot of people have a huge collection of Game Boy Advance games or just feel nostalgic about playing games this way. And maybe they do want the option of playing their Super Nintendo games on an on a SD card, but they, they really want this feature, right? And that's what's really important for a lot of people, including me. Especially if you wanna use something like original hardware, like this, uh, this link cable adapter that it comes with. And also if you want something that charges with USB-C and has a headphone jack, if you wanna have that classic experience of like playing with your friends and your friend has maybe a Game Boy Advance and you have an analog pocket, you can play with each other. If you have two analog pockets, you can play with each other. That's impressive. And that death genuinely takes me back to having a more classic experience. In, in a quick summary, that's what the Analog Pocket is. It's a modern day Game Boy that's not emulation. It's all hardware and it really does take all the best parts of all the Game Boy systems, puts it into one package and just gives it to the customer. And I think that's really cool. I really enjoy this device. Let's go over some pros and cons. There's more pros than cons, but the cons can definitely break it for you. So let's go over that really quick. So besides the other positive things that I've talked about, the, the number one pro I would say with this device, and I, it's the thing that everyone talks about, is the screen. The screen is fantastic and it, it looks better than any Game Boy Advance that I've ever modded. I've modded Game Boy Advance SPs, I have a Game Boy Micro and those screens with the right setup are, are fantastic, but this still, I wouldn't say beats it out of the water, but it significantly is better. It just has a very crisp screen. And if you do want that classic experience, it gives you options to change that. So that way you can actually get that classic experience with your analog pocket with that original screen, whether you want the green kind of look for your Game Boy or, or maybe the, even the pixelated uh, way that the Game Boy Advance SP was. It, it, you can play the way that you want and there's a lot of great customizations for the screen so that way you can harken back to that classic feel that you want or if you want something more modern then you could do that too second thing is something i already talked about but it's still really important to bring up it's uh the, the fact that you can do hardware cartridges and emulation on the same device without having to like jailbreak it or something you can technically do this with like psps and stuff but with a PSP, you have to kind of like jailbreak it or, or kind of like mod it essentially or mod a Game Boy Advance. Th there's things that you could do, but with this, it's all out of the box. It all works together. And that's something I really enjoy. It was actually surprisingly very easy and something I did within 20 minutes, just with a few YouTube tutorials. I'll leave a few links in the description for you so you guys know what I did. Um, I'll leave like a link to like this reddit thread where I found a link that lets you download everything It's also great particularly for games that maybe weren't released 
in America or maybe uh, never got a chance to thrive here. For a couple examples is Mother 3 and Terranigma, right? Those are games that I, they're almost impossible basically to get in America uh, and you, there's no way to really play it. And those are amazing games that everyone wants to play. However, um, just Nintendo won't release them. So with the power of emulation, we're able to experience those. And, and you know, Terranigma is a top 10 game of all time for me. So it's awesome to have that in my analog pocket. It's awesome to have something like that on the go because I used to have to experience that strictly on my uh, computer. That's not the case anymore. I can genuinely just have it on my analog pocket, take it with me everywhere, and that's something I will definitely be replaying now. The third pro is something specific to me, but it's just a pro that I thought I'd mention. It is a synthesizer uh, like kind of device as well. There's this cable that you can actually get with your analog pocket. It works with the link cable and it plugs into MIDI. And what's sick about this is that you can actually get make music with this device. Now you have to kind of know how to use the software in it and that's something I plan on doing. But the fact that I can do that just makes it really cool. Uh, <laughs> and that's a, it's, it's software that's been on other Game Boys as well to give that kind of Game Boy vibe if, in case you wanted to make music that way. But for me, I'm just, it's something I, I love experimenting with new things in terms of music and it's something I'm definitely going to play around with a lot so I'm glad that that's available it's just a cool little thing but it's so cute that um you can get this for like 20 bucks on the analog website so since I mentioned the accessories why not talk about this really quick there is this accessory which I think is almost essential luckily it's eight you're able to get it on the website if you already have an analog pocket so don't really you know get go through scalpers or anything like that but essentially it's a dock for your pocket now it's not just a dock to charge it it actually has hdmi uh and you know options for actually playing on a monitor so you can actually it's essentially like a switch game boy thing which i think is super cool and this is really high a really high quality dock i feel like this is like stainless steel or something so it's very sturdy and everything and i really like that i almost think the dock is essential despite the price even even at 99 dollars, i do think it's essential and i think if you can get this get it it really changes and you can the fact that i can play like game boy advance games on this totally gives me like that game do you remember that like gamecube adapter for your game boy advance back in the day it gave me that vibe i never had a chance to get that and that thing is super expensive now but the fact that i can do that on this it kind of brings that back for me and i, I love that so um yeah so i love that they include they don't include this this is a separate accessory but i, I don't i would i didn't mind paying the 99 dollars for it personally because it it even lets you stream if you really wanted to. So that might be something I look at in the future with this. Now, like I mentioned, this is not a device for everyone and there's definitely some cons that will deter you. Number one, and this is the worst con by, by far, right? It's the availability. It's the availability of this thing. The price, $220, $220 base price, it's a little steep, but I can justify it because it's my favorite console, it plays music, goes on a dock, lets me do hard cartridges, so like software emulation, all the pros I mentioned is worth 220 for me. But because of the availability, most likely if you're someone that didn't get this for 220 plus tax and shipping or whatever, you're probably gonna be paying about $400 for this thing and I'm not, I just, this is not worth $400. It's amazing. And if you just have $400 to throw away and you're just, you got money like that, then you know, Go ahead and get it uh, just make sure you get one sealed <laughs> but for me personally i personally would not spend 400 dollars on this so that's just me like that i would never even come close to that i'm i feel very saddened by the fact that analog just refuses to make more of these devices for people and doesn't have it available hopefully they can improve that but we'll see while i did Praise the dock and even the $20 cable for MIDI input. They're not all accessories are created equal. I personally have a matte screen protector on this that I got for essentially free with this. And I feel like this is perfectly fine, gets rid of glare and everything. I do not think it's worth paying $20 plus $20 shipping for one screen protector from the analog website. Their shipping is very expensive. Um, and I also have this analog pocket hard shell case. And my problem with this thing is that it looks nice. And yeah, sure, it protects the pocket in a, in, a, in a way, but for the price you pay for this, like $20, it feels like it's not meant to be taken around. If anything, this feels like it's meant to really just kind of like stay home and be like a collector's item on a shelf or something. And this is just a nice thing for that. I mean, if you just want to like a really expensive 
collector's thing to put your pocket in, then sure, but you're also better off just having it boxed at that point. And I don't think this is worth $30 plus $20 shipping um, for just this. And I, I do think this was a little overpriced and I, I wish there was another alternative. However, I got it because I thought initially that it was gonna be, you know, like essential, but um, I was proven wrong. You, there's not even like a way to hold other cartridges or anything like that. Like if you have one cartridge in there, that's all you can really do. I already paid for it and I already paid shipping for it. I'm not sending this back because also the return policy to send any of the six accessories back or anything like that is just not worth it because you're also paying shipping on your, on your own end, which I think is a little greedy on Analog's part, but it is what it is. Basically the shipping's so expensive and not all the accessories are created equal. I do like my Analog Pocket quite a bit. I've been using it every day extensively. Um, I'm going through Minish Cap right now and then afterwards I'm actually going to be going through Mother 3. I just want to basically go through my catalog of games that I have not been able to go through for quite some time. Am I a little worried about trying to get this again in case this breaks or something? I get that some of these items are super rare and hard to get and I understand the fear of getting this and then just like not wanting to play it because it's so hard to get. The availability is a thing and I, I get that 100%. However, my mindset is if you have that fear that you're gonna get this and never play it, then don't get it at all. You might as well just get, again, a Game Boy Advance that's modded or something and have that similar experience. For me, the purpose of getting this is to actually just get it and enjoy it. And I feel like, yes, I, you know, I have like maybe like a small scratch there and some scratches at the bottom of this because of trying to put in the dock and whatever. And yeah, like, you know, that, that doesn't look the best, but it's also meant to be used. And as long as my screen is perfectly fine and the buttons work, I'm fine with this getting a little scratched up. It's part of get, get, uh, old games in general. Like if I look at my old Game Boy Advance SP, it's not in perfect condition. If you're someone that, that wants to get this and you know you're gonna use it, but you're scared about using it, don't be. I would encourage you to actually just take the time to use it and enjoy it. That's why it's there. And, you know, I would like you to enjoy the console that you basically waited a year for. Maybe you had to pay scalper money for. I would want you to enjoy it to its fullest capability. Just be careful. Get a good case. I will definitely be getting looking at cases on Amazon that work well with this. Make sure you play games. Make sure you enjoy it. You only have you know, one life to live. So please enjoy your analog pocket to its fullest extent. And I hope this maybe interested you into maybe looking at something at, if you can get it for around uh, close to MSRP, I would say the most I would pay for this is like $300. Personally, if I were you, I, I'm just saying that because if it's 220 and I'm thinking tax and shipping, it's probably 270 $30 above that, it's probably not too bad. So if you can get this for like $300 or less, then sure. If anything more, I just honestly recommend just steering away from this. I'm glad I got this, I'm very happy with it. And I hope that you guys, if you have one that you're enjoying it, and if you're looking to get one that I, you know, I hope they either restock or you can get one at a good price. That's my video on the analog pocket. More videos to come. I'll probably do a video about a port portable emulator I got recently and telling you how that probably compares to this. Um, so just stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and take care.